So this is the fifth film in the MonsterVerse cinematic universe, which started in 2014's Godzilla, followed up with Kong Skull Island, Godzilla King of the Monsters. The most recent one was Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> so there's a lot of these, and we're finally here. Godzilla Kong, the new empire. Following the events of the previous film, we see King Kong, who is uh, more or less the protagonist uh, of the movie, and is in Hollow Earth, which is uh, an empty place in the middle of the Earth where there's dinosaurs, giant bugs, gravity kind of works different. Um, somehow there's light down there, but King Kong is living in Hollow Earth. He's lonely. He wants some companionship and family. Not really a whole lot of other people around. Meanwhile, Godzilla is living in the ocean, coming out to fight other kaiju, laying waste to a whole lot of uh, destruction. Oh, uh, Kong eventually wanders around Hollow Earth a little bit more and discovers another race of giant apes uh, down there, discovers kind of this, uh, what it's like the Baby Yoda version of King Kong, this like kind of small Kid Kong thing, and also finds the evil Scar King who has plans to kind of take over the Earth and ascend back. He's been trapped in Hollow Earth for a millennia. Amongst this are our returning <laughs> human characters that we don't care anything about. Rebecca Hall's Eileen Andrews with uh, the worst simple Jack haircut. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry and D Dan Stevens are, are also back. They were in the previous film. At one point, Millie Bobby Brown was in one, one of these or two, two of these. She's not in this one. They, they're kind of following around our, our giant kaiju to ex basically explain the plot. It gets a, a little weird, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of bang crash uh it's a it's a lot of fun moments zach what do you think simple jack haircut is that what you said <laughs> yes you slipped that in so smooth <laughs> poor rebecca hall rebecca hall is too good for this movie uh godzilla x kong is fun I, I think this movie is genuinely a fun time uh at least in its first half hour and its last half hour the open of this movie the, i'm telling you the first like 25 minutes are genuinely a good time. And the end, of course, your climactic monster fights, great time. But it's two hours long, and my God, the hour in the middle is is a drag, man. And it sucks, because it starts so good, and it ends so good. And I remember thinking, as I was sitting in the theater through the whole first act, boy, this one this one moves really great. Adam Wingard hot off the heels of Godzilla versus Kong. He's putting something new together. He knows the medium. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to play with these action figures that are these giant monsters and how to run them together just right. But then you get to all the human stuff and it is such a bore. And now I get why I hadn't, I couldn't remember who was starring in this film. And you had to tell me uh, last episode that it's Rebecca Hall and Brian Tyree Henry from the previous film and Dan Stevens and I, I now I know why I didn't see them a lot in advertising because it's like they had to have I'm, legendary's got to know like the human stuff so is so dry so doesn't work drags down the monster <laughs> stuff hard to believe uh, where do you want to jump in here um well let, let's jump in with with, with the action because that's that's really why people come to the, these movies I, I remember um, Michael Shannon uh, last summer talked about the flash movie and how he really didn't like it and how it was like a kid throwing their uh action figures together um that's what this movie reminds me of but in a good way because that's that's what we're here we're here for big monster fights we we see king kong fighting other big apes fighting godzilla they eventually team up against the scar king there's a couple of other surprises in there as well from the monster universe and the fights are great and some of it is literally out, out of wrestling there's a, there's a part where godzilla literally suplexes king kong off the pyramid <laughs> and that was just like it's like it was written by a five-year-old it's amazing so like the, the action is is the probably the, the best part and that's why people come to these like i said like adam winger like seems to know where he's at after godzilla versus kong like not only is there uh your two titans right uh teaming up in this feature which is a good time but there's also a good variety of other additional kaiju that are dealt with at least in the early part of the feature and then towards the end to fight Godzilla and Kong together, right? Like you got to have an equal and opposite force that you're going to throw against them, which is pretty satisfying, I should say. But at least in the early parts, like some of the monsters they just throw up at the start are great. This giant like crab creature Godzilla's fighting and this weird like serpent thing that's underwater and shoots pink 
pink lightning and even Godzilla is like pink lightning, right? Which is obviously different from his traditional blue. Like, it seems like this film approaches these monsters with the feeling of like, yes, we are going to be running them against each other like children's action figures. And the VFX works great for that. It does make me wonder at some point, like when I'm watching one of these long sequences and my brain just starts to like space out in the middle of a giant CGI monster fight because I realize I'm not really seeing anything real. I'm just kind of waiting for the thing to, to wrap up. Like making those sequences progressively interesting is a challenge, especially this being not the first or second or third, but again, like fifth movie in, in this MonsterVerse <laughs> franchise, as I understand it. Like it's hard to make those good. And they managed to do that by giving you props, right? God, Godzilla and Kong have weapons now. <laughs> Or at least Kong does. Uh, It's it's not just using his fists. He's got like this axe thing from the previous feature. And if you keep an eye on the trailer, you might even notice this like power glove thing that comes in later. (laughs) His mech arm. Yeah. He's yeah. He's, he's got a smaller child size Kong that he swings around sometimes and slams into other creatures, which is really funny. Um, Like managing to make those fights progressively visually interesting is I think a big victory for this movie and like makes those fights a good time. Every time you see them, you're just like, Oh man, take a bite of the popcorn. I came here for the monster fights. I love the monster fights. Like they, they work, they work great. Those are the best, the the highs of the film. I think. Yeah. We, we have a a really interesting antagonist in, in the scar King, which is like a, a bad ape he's he's kind of he's big like kong but he's kind of more gangly flips around he's got this yeah yeah, he's got this awesome whip made of spines which is really metal um you know clearly clearly the the bad guy um that that you love to hate by contrast the stuff that doesn't work at all are these these dumb human plots uh rebecca hall and her her daughter gia played by kaylee hoddle um, from the previous movie that, that, that she they discover her lost in hollow earth she's she and she can like telepathically communicate with kong and sign with with kong she can talk to godzilla also telepathically like it's really bizarre uh brian tyree henry is has a loser podcast uh, just like ourselves uh there's a lot of podcast jokes that really don't work and he, he's supposed to be the comic relief and none of his jokes land i feel so so bad because he's a great actor given really poor material uh to work with they're just kind of following and investigating uh kong and basically explaining the plot it gets really really complicated near near the end where there's just all this stuff about reversing the flow of gravity and electromagnetic this and telepathic that and like crystal pyramid it, it's like what is going on just show me the fight so like again the human characters and the human plot are, are the real weak point yeah it's funny like walking out of this feature I, I was talking about how i felt like a lot of this was like put together in reshoots because a lot of the human stuff is so slow and in these scenes our characters are just rushing from scene to scene somebody will say like well hey rebecca hall why is it a big deal that your character's daughter like you know need, needs to go to hollow earth that she's like because she's having bad dreams and she doesn't believe in herself and it's my daughter so we gotta go now she gets all teary-eyed because rebecca hall can turn it on again she's great in this movie and brian tyree henry is like trying to work with a script that's just not that funny i thought his, his opening scene is kind of funny like the opening salvo of brian tyree henry not bad And then it just starts to slide back because he's like, oh, there's this anti-gravity thing. And she's like, how does it work? He's like, I'll tell you later. We got to we got to run to the next scene. Like they're just they're just like sprinting from scene (laughs) to scene. And then you got Dan Stevens as Trapper, who is this like Ace Ventura, red clad, big pet veteran veterinarian that I can't remember was in the previous feature or not. But he is implied to have a previous relationship with Rebecca Hall's character. And interestingly enough, Dan Steven plays a lot of villains. I kept waiting for him to turn and be like the villain character because he seems really villainous. And then like as the movie goes on, he just keeps kind of wandering through this this path of like he seems like a good dude. But I don't know, there may be something a little sinister there. And I think that was intentional. I, I believe, much like that Volkswagen ad shot that people have been dunking on on Twitter, I think it was 100% on purpose. I think it was designed that way to give it a little bit of flair. I think Stevens is doing something intentional. And I think that's good, but it doesn't make the movie any shorter. Like, God, these human parts are just such a such a dull drag down. Uh yeah, that's that's where I'm at on the human. Yeah, the, it, Dan Stevens is is better. Uh, he's definitely more more entertaining. He's kind of a little bit of that uh, Han Solo 
Indiana Jones anti-hero kind of yeah yeah um and he's, and he's there for he conveniently always has exactly what they need they're like oh Kong's oh yeah that's what I, he's like he's like the animal vet he's like Kong's yeah. personal doctor he's like yeah beginning of the movie Kong has like a toothache and they have this like giant machine to like put, yank his tooth and put and give a give him a a replacement um so so he's he's there for those convenient re- reasons he's also the, the he's kind of the pilot of their they have a vessel to explore a hollow earth um he's probably the strongest of of the the human characters but uh and there's this mess there's this eye-rolling subplot about how um rebecca hall and her daughter don't they're not really getting along and that they're she's having a hard time in school um and she's having these weird visions and again none of that stuff like really works and i could care less but i'm just like just get to the fights yeah like and it's funny because the fights I feel like the fights lack a lot of, I mean, they're creative, but I should say a lot of the monster engagements in general, when Kong's like running around hollow earth or sitting there nursing his sore tooth or being sad that he didn't have anybody to fight. Like a lot of that's just grunts and groans. We were looking on IMDb for who the voices are for Godzilla and Kong. And I'm not even sure there are any, I think they might just be completely fabricated. And like, it's funny because a lot of those scenes are the stuff that work the best. And I think that's the stuff that requires much less physical, tangible direction than the human stuff. Because the human stuff, you got to direct actors on a set. Hey, stand here, hit your mark. You're going to look at this person and say this. Okay, let's move the camera, get the right lens, get the lighting. Like a lot of the CGI stuff is like, these are just crunched VFX workers putting this together, which is good. That's great. But it's just funny that there's like this odd power dynamic in this in this film when you're watching it that like the monster stuff clearly works so much better but in the world of, of Godzilla x Kong, Godzilla and Kong are not gods. Uh, they have to do everything in service of the humans. The humans have to take care of them and make them feel better and fix fix Kong's toothache. Like, the, the humans are the <laughs> ones running the show. But then when you actually go see the movie, you couldn't care less about the human stuff. It's like, get out of here. Like, get, get, to, the, get to the goods, you know? Like, that's, that's what we all want to see. More of that less actors give me more more cgi monster <laughs> madness like what an odd yeah, thing it, to say it's definitely too too long like it's a full two hours you could cut 15 20 minutes and, and have a, a tight 100 minute movie it work and it would work uh j- just as well good good uh fun score by tom holkenberg uh, otherwise known as junkie xl who did the, the score oh, yeah. for th- things like mad max fury, fury road and um zack snyder's justice league yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask before we move on to final recommendations, Andy, is there any need you think for the next movie, whatever they do here, and they're going to make another one. It's made, it's made enough money. My God, they're going to make another one of these. Any need to stick with this core cast, or do we just bail on them? Because you can keep Godzilla and Kong, obviously. You just have other humans, right, that deal with them in some capacity, or maybe like have these characters be like cursory sidekick. Like, how how long are we going to keep? these 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 human characters running around like we don't care about rebecca hall she doesn't need any additional you know like well it's crazy? like well it's like millie bobby brown was in a couple of these and now she's not so you can always kind of phase them yeah. out unfortunately I, I do think you got to stick with them somewhat so they give like people a, a, a consistency that they can see film to film so like we're probably going to have at least rebecca hall and brian tyree henry in this the question is like how do you go bigger because you've had Godzilla and Kong fight each other. Now you've had the team up movie and had them fight other dangers. Like, how do you go bigger than you? And they've done a lot of the other, they, they've done Ghidorah and Rodan and like some of the other Toho uh, creations for these. So it's like, how, how do you go even bigger than you've gone? They got to go to the moon. Be, they got to time travel. It, right. They got to be it's aliens. Gotta be, it's like, it's got to be space. I think that's the only, that's the only <laughs> place something as big as these creatures can come from. And it's funny because even though they do the hollow earth gag, the way you get to hollow earth in the world of Godzilla Kong is basically a portal anyway. It's like, it's like this, these portals that open up made out of energy that you go into and then you have this whole sequence down, which is in the film. Yeah. They're like, and then the you ocean. show up. Right. So like, it might as well be a multidimensional portal. They might as well be flying through one of those dune ships on spice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just going somewhere else. Uh, so that's, um, that's got, it's gotta be on Mars. invasion. <laughs> yep. U- UFO shows up. Oh God, what is it? Drops Mecha Godzilla. You know what I mean? And then they're, they're on, like, that's gotta be, it's got to be the next thing, I think. Or maybe they'll fight the AI from Mission Impossible. Any other thoughts for recommendations, Andy? I think I'm ready. The entity. Uh, Andy, would you recommend 
Godzilla Kong, the new empire. I would. It, it's a lot of fun. Really great, great action. Uh, we, we get to see big kaiju battles. We get to see Godzilla and Kong team up. Uh, the human character stuff can go. It can always go in these movies, but you got to put someone, you got to put names to sell it. Definitely helps. It could be a little bit shorter, uh, but it's definitely a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. I think it's a, yeah, it's a good time. Would, would recommend. It's 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 a bore in the middle, but if you're watching at home, that'll be the bit you get up and do your laundry for. You know what I mean? Like the the open and close is good. I like Godzilla v Kong. Godzilla x Kong is fun. Like I'm telling you, they're great popcorn features. But for the next one, if they do stick with the cast, cut a half hour out of the movie and literally just make them the B plot because I think these movies still try to make the human people the A plot. And it's so not. It's like the, the human stuff is so obviously outshined by the reason we're all in the theater, which is to watch the monsters. Like, just let, go all the way in next time. That's that's it. Like, lean, lean it back. Give me 25 minutes of people running around screaming about Godzilla blowing something up and then cut to Godzilla blowing things up. That's what we all want. It's a good time. Otherwise, we'd recommend Godzilla Kong. It's a surprisingly good time at the movies. And with that, we should move into our middle segment. Uh, lately, we've been talking about trailers, things that are coming out soon that we want you to see. And we've done a few of those in the past few weeks. So now I want to return to a tried and true format, something we've done on the show for a very long time. I'm, I'm going to be heading up the conversation on it, but I got to have Andy intro it for me. Andy, uh, what do we call this segment? It's time for the death of cinema. 